active plan here. So, um, knight g5 would kind of send my knight off into no man's land. He'd probably play bishop f5 and kind of laugh at me. Um, I'm sorry, he'd probably exchange rooks and then play bishop f5 and then laugh at me. It's important to do these things in the right order. But yeah, I could do knight c5. You exchange knights. Um, having the knight traded would give my bishop access to c6. Having my bishop on c5 would present problems for his bishop. And having only a single open line on the whole board, in general... Um, oh! And plus, when you're ahead on material, if you're ahead on pawns, you want to trade pieces down to make the end game easier. Uh, but we're not exactly in an end game. My bishop is really strongly placed on b6, though, and I don't have any urge to trade my piece for his knight. I shouldn't be trading my good pieces for his bad pieces. He does intend to make some sort of... Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, if I play a4, he could do knight b4. And then I do knight c5 at some point, and I'm totally cool there. Yeah, let's attempt to cement my bishop on b6. Or at least get remove the possibility of both of his pieces taking on a3. This is a pretty dynamic position here. Alright, so he plays bishop f5. Like I suspected, he's... Um, well, okay, he can't... Okay, he likes having a knight versus bishop dynamic here. This bishop is outside the pawn chain, so that's, despite being a bad bishop technically, it's reasonably well placed. Um, my knight cuts through the position better than a bishop would cut through it, so getting the bishop pair here wouldn't make things any easier. Yeah, if the position's going to stay semi-closed like this, um, I can't have him with a knight running around while my bishops can't enter. 
So we're going to see... Uh, this is going to be a messy endgame. So do I lead off with knight c5, or do I take his rook, or something else? I play knight c5 straight away. Yeah, I think the correct pieces get traded in that event. Whereas if I trade rooks and then play knight c5, we can do bishop... No, he can't do bishop c8. So the correct pieces get traded either way. This is one of those rare positions where the order of the moves doesn't actually matter all a lot. Although, if I do rook takes, his bishop will be on d7, and then I do knight moves. His bishop remains on d7. Whereas in this line, um, his rook, if I do knight c5, um, his bishop's on f5, where it's more aggressively posted. I think this exchanges the correct pieces to get us into an endgame. And then, once we're into the endgame, um, once we're here, he's got to take my knight. I've got to take his knight back. My pieces are just um, better than his. And this will be a difficult endgame. Yeah, he does bishop f5 exactly as expected, intending bishop c2. No surprise at all there. So I stop bishop c2. Also giving myself the possibility of bishop d1 should I need it. Yeah, and there's rook d8. So now we exchange rooks. Um, and I hold on to my pawns and maneuver my king toward the center. And now, absent some blunder, this is somewhat better for me. I could consider playing a5, imperils my pawn, kind of, not really. Yeah, no, I just have a dark square bind if I do that. Um, now, as long as I don't do something stupid like king f3, I'm doing okay here. I just need to centralize my king and activate my bishop. All right, he's clearly intending f6. I should contest his uh, 
aim to play f6 here. That was the last move I expected. I would never have guessed that. So his idea is he wants to have a fortress. Um, that seems kind of unrealistic here. So let's keep his bishop out of the game. And the problem with just king e8 and bishop f8 is that my king races all the way over to b6, and he's got... It's going to be challenging for him to defend that position. And yeah, if he plans to play g5 here, that's not going to... Well, okay. Um, the immediate g5, I just play... Um, bishop takes h5. I want to say that h4 is totally safe here, but I haven't even bothered to calculate it, so I shouldn't say that. Nor do I know if h4 is best or not. Maybe I'll need to go back there sometime and push h3 and g4 to get those moving. Uh, so it's better to keep the tension there if I can. Um, can I? King e3, g5, bishop h5, bishop c2, uh, b4, bishop b3, oh, bishop e2. Yeah, I do hold that. Guess what? Uh, king e3, h4. e3, h4, g4 almost traps the bishop. Uh, he's forced to do bishop b1. And I do g5, and he does bishop to g7. And then his h pawns are stranded, and I potentially have pawns on both wings that can promote. Yeah, king e3 is strong here. Yeah, double bishop endgames, um, I think we were looking at some of that the other day. Uh, now, I said this wasn't good for him because I could just take on h5. Yeah, no, I had a... did I? Yeah, I was talking about a few number of years ago, I managed to win a bishop-bishop-pawn versus bishop-bishop endgame or something like that. Or, I'm sorry, no, it was bishop, bishop, pawn versus bishop. Um, so I managed to get the pawn all the way to the other end of the board, um, threatened to promote it, and he, my opponent trades this one bishop for it, and then I had to mate with the two bishops. And this happened with very little time on the clock. Uh, so I hope that that doesn't repeat here, because that was a pretty stressful game. Uh, I don't want to relive that, but... Hey, a win's a win, right? So I was saying I just take h5. I don't have anything better than just taking the... Wait, if I take, I have two ways out. It's important to have a way out. Okay. See, I take here. So now I have more pawns. I've, I'm up two pawns. Um, and my pieces are just better placed in general.
All right, there we go. King e8. And I was saying, now my bishop still has a way out. Um, it's probably best that I just take that before he plays like g4. Unless I'm confident about that in a game as well. That looks kind of scary. If I just allow g4... Um, wait, his, yeah, if I allow g4, then I have to promote before he takes my bishop. Although his ki even if he does manage to play bishop f8, we exchange, he does that. We still need to find a way to hold down the f7 pawn while this king treks over to h6. And while he's holding the f7 pawn, also hold the g4 pawn. <clears throat> so, yeah, just tactically, that idea of trapping my bishop on the king's side doesn't pan out. Um, okay, so b4. I was going to say, if he manages to trap my bishop and finds a way to threaten to take it, then it comes down to a race between my pawns over here and him chopping my bishop. But there is no race. g4 might trap my bishop, but it does not win it. Also, my bishop's pretty aggressively posted on h5. Um, I don't know what he's going to do about that, because now his king is anchored to this pawn. But while his king's anchored to that, I'm also threatening to promote on this side of the board. So he's... Um, Railbird has some serious uh, problems to solve here. And maybe he's up to the task, but... I hope I can present more problems than he's able to solve in the time he has allotted. Also, maybe if I'm lucky, I can get um, John Chernoff to take a look at my game after the game, or I could get some stronger player to also review the game. So I'm kind of curious what I did right, what I did wrong, what my opponent did right, and what my opponent did wrong. Um, so let me star this game in my history so they can find it. But also, it's my most recent game. Okay, so he takes. I kind of have to take. Can you guys imagine an endgame where this pawn, I think Amazing Boy called this pawn Herbert, little H pawn Herbert. Can you imagine? where that actually decides the game after we do all these tactics and stuff on the king queen side. Um, can you imagine that endgame? Okay, so he's threatening bishop f1. And that puts a question to my pawn on c4. Um, 
But wait, I do b5. If we trade, and then he does bishop f1, I still have time for a6. It's like I have time to play b5 and a6, and there's really nothing he can do. Not even his bishop can get in in time to stop them. Uh, that's a pretty radical conclusion. Let me double check it. b5, c takes, c takes, bishop f1, a6, b takes, okay, and then, yeah, things fall apart at that point. So it's one tempo too slow to try to race my pawns. So I do actually need to take time to play bishop e2 here first. This will allow me to get my pawn up to a6, and no further just yet, but a6 is an accomplishment. So yeah, I think Amazing Guy was commenting the other day, maybe you heard this from somebody else, I'm trying to remember his story, but I'm drawing a blank at the moment. There's Albert, Bert, Cuthbert, Dilbert, Egbert, Philbert, Gilbert, and Hilbert, or something. So they're all the Berts. Um, so yeah, my big plan here is to just push up on. Um, B5, takes, takes. Threatening a6. And what makes this so destructive is that after he plays bishop g2, I just play bishop f3. And he's got no piece of stopping my pawns. So, this is kind of a big deal. Well, yeah, this game involved a lot of maneuvering, and then maneuvering to maneuver, and then maneuvering to maneuver to maneuver. So, this game has gone on for quite some time. Um, I don't know what time control you've been playing at, but uh, yeah, this is a 90-30 game. Which means, um, well, in a 90-0 game, that could run for up to three hours. In a 90-30, if you assume a game length of about 40 moves, then you're assuming you're going to add another 20 minutes or so per player. Yeah, so uh, my idea of playing a6 here is just annihilating because a6, king d7, a7, and there's no time to stop it. Um, so I can just push a6. Well, I mean, if you ever get tired of shooting for first, you can give somebody else a chance. <laughs> but yeah, I guess um, you're higher on the ladder, so you have the right to do that. Oh, um, yeah, no, I definitely am and have always been from the USA. I guess my chess handle, um, Tardovsky, is just a reference to a, well, to um, one of the better video game characters, this wonderful composer who lives on Tadpole Pond. But um, in the interest of not having my stream taken down, I have a different Twitch name um, because I don't want like Nintendo to be litigious for no reason. Also, like um, those kinds of composers, um, uh, like Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff, and so on and so forth, and even Prokofiev is um, Zug addict has been playing some of that music. Um, I just think that they come up with these wonderful musical ideas. So I, I pay homage both to the video game and just to composers in general. Alright, so I could push a7, he takes me here, 
and then I have some tactics to worry about. Um, or I could take e5 and just terminally shut his bishop off of a8. So a7 takes um, these tactics. These tactics trouble me. I just want to take e5. He's got no time to get his bishop back to stop it. Let's see if he remembers what happens when the pawn gets to the other side. Ah, I have a queen. All right, I wanted to do something dramatic for this queen thing, so let's uh, see. What can I do? Uh, I don't like any of these themes. There we go. This absolutely disgusting purple theme is now the theme for this game. Just to highlight the fact that this game has gone into a new phase. So, yeah, for being needlessly dramatic here, um, I just have to make sure I don't hang stuff. Like, if I play queen h8 right away, he does bishop g1, and that's no fun. Um, oh, wait, queen b7 is strong. Queen b7, and he has to do bishop c7, um, otherwise he gets mated. But bishop c7 gets crushed right away. Oh, nice. This is phase two of the game. Winning a one game. <laughs> also, my opponent doesn't have to put up with these board colors. It's just me. All right. Well, that's enough of that. That was that was fun to do at the end here, but yeah.